we're going to be looking at the top 10 horrifying mental asylums. The lunatic asylum is a common trope in horror movies for a reason. There are many terrifying things that have occurred in them throughout time. We've rounded up a list of the top 10 most terrifying. Number 10. Overbrook Insane Asylum This New Jersey asylum was shut down in the mid-1970s, but not before traumatizing and torturing many of its patients. Overbrook's minimal staff couldn't handle the amount of patients it had. Those of them that were interested in looking after people during the early 20th century, conditions were so awful. Several people died from the cold exposure in their beds, while others went missing and were never found. Number 9. Willowbrook State School if you've ever seen the American Horror Story Asylum television series, you may recognize some of the traits from Willowbrook. This Staten Island lockup served as inspiration for the show's second season. Willowbrook was notorious for its ominous zoo-like conditions. Patients were often found covered in their own refuse. Many were assaulted by staff members. Willowbrook is rumored to have even been the one-time home of serial killer Cropsey, the infamous child killer. A Peabody Award-winning investigation revealed a lot of the more appalling details, but you'll be shocked to hear that this place remains open to this day, although its conditions have vastly improved. Number 8. Poveglia Island Asylum Stories about this asylum in Venice, Italy are obscured by a jumble of true and false information. One thing is for certain, it got off to a bad start. It was a strange person indeed who came up with the idea of building a mental institution on an island. Although most famous for previously being a quarantine station for people dying of the Black Plague, the patients who later made up the asylum's population claimed to have seen the ghosts of those plagued victims, but medical staff disregarded their pleas. One of the asylum doctors meanwhile got into the habit of performing crude lobotomies with the aid of drills, hammers, and chisels. The rumor goes that this doctor was himself driven mad, claiming that he too could see the ghosts of plague carriers. He lost his life by plunging himself from the hospital's bell tower and dying on the ground below. Number 7. Athens Lunatic Asylum. No, it's not in Athens, Greece. Right here in Athens, Ohio, and this place had a real issue with women who dared to exhibit any kind of sexual desire. The doctors at Athens Lunatic Asylum allowed no such women with hysteria and said that they were sick thanks to what they called menstrual derangements. In order to treat this supposed sickness, they froze, shocked, kicked, and occasionally lobotomized their patients. This place only ended up closing its doors in 1993. Number 6. Metropolitan State Hospital Sedating children and treating them like poisoned prisoners. There are plenty of horrifying tales attributed to this hospital. Perhaps the most infamous one demonstrates that there was an utter disregard for patient security and well-being. It is reported once a patient went for a walk around the hospital's prison-like grounds in 1978. She never returned, and she was never found. It wasn't until two years later that another patient was revealed as her killer. He brought the police to the three graves that he had buried parts of her body across. The killer kept seven of her teeth, giving this horrific asylum the nickname the Hospital of Seven Teeth. Number 5. Trenton State Hospital This asylum has become synonymous over the years with the infamous Kirk Bride Plan, a mental hospital design scheme laid out in the 19th century by Philadelphian psychiatrist. The Kirk Bride Plan's creator, Thomas Kirk Bride, is an advocate for large open spaces with plenty of natural light that are meant to give patients greater space and comfort. Unfortunately, many of the hospitals that took up this approach went on to become famed for their poor conditions. In fact, Trenton State Hospital, then known as the New Jersey State Lunatic Asylum, was the very first place founded on this plan. The medical abuses that took place there are brutal. At various points, patients' teeth, gallbladders, stomachs, 
testicles, uteruses, and ovaries were removed by one doctor. Richard Cotton, the doctor frequently treated patients without their consent because he thought that psychological diseases and mental disorders were related. Often, the result of his experiments was death. Number 4. Danvers State Hospital Another hospital built on Kirkbride's theory. Denver's State Hospital is said to be the inspiration for H.P. Lovecraft's Arkham Sanatorium, one of horror fiction's more famous locations. Sadly, the horrific incidents that occurred in Danvers were real and happened there. By 1939, the facility was scheduled to house 600 patients, but there were approximately 2,500 patients, with no personnel added. This meant that many patients died days before their bodies were discovered. Danvers also became the backdrop to the world's first transvital lobotomy, in which an ice pick is inserted through the eye socket and into the brain. Number 3. Penhurst In Penhurst, if a child bit another child again after receiving a warning, his teeth would be pulled. This asylum's reputation for child cruelty was built on the findings of investigative reporter Bill Baldini. He shined a light on the facility's widespread physical, mental, and sexual abuses. Number 2. Topeka State Hospital By the 1960s, Topeka State Hospital had a reputation as a leading psychiatric facility, but that was not always the case. There are several of reports ranging from accounts of people being tied up naked for months on end to stories of agonizing boredom patients underwent. The hospital made no attempt to excite patients, bodies, or minds. Worst of all was the story recounted by a journalist that visited the hospital in the early 20th century. He came across a patient who had been restrained for so long that his restraints had begun to grow skin over them. Number 1. Bethlehem Royal Hospital Its name may be Bethlehem Royal Hospital, but it became more famous for its nickname, Bedlam. Originally owned by monks and opened in 1247, Bedlam ultimately began housing homeless people with mental health problems. Mental health treatment was not widely understood back then. Daily punishments, scripture lessons, and chaining people to walls seemed humane enough. There were some individuals who had been imprisoned for 20 years or longer by the time the British government assumed power in the middle of the 19th century. Things didn't improve. Patients were starved, the premises were dirty, and the staff lacked training. An inspection in 1598 declared Bedlam was not fit for any man to dwell in for 30 years or more. The whole place was closed, and a new hospital was opened. Things began to get really bad. Patients were treated like prisoners in a sideshow or zoo. Bedlam was open to the public and wealthy people gave patients pennies so they might perform songs and dances. Future management promoted torture, cold baths, and beatings. Bedlam remains open, 750 years after the institution's doors first opened despite a 19th century parliament inquiry, two additional moves, and numerous location modifications. It is much improved but with a controversial history that won't and shouldn't disappear anytime soon.